welcome back to Science with Miss Pearson. Today we are going to be continuing our unit on light. I'm so excited to find out some more about light today and to answer some more of my questions about light. So, so far in science, in this unit, we've asked and answered a lot of questions. Some of the questions we've asked about light are, what are sources of light? What are shadows? How does light travel? What happens when I light something? And how do I make something dark? In our very first class, we thought about what happens when I try to light something. In the next class, we figured out what are sources of light, and we realized that there are both natural and artificial sources of light. Natural sources of light are the sun, the moon, the stars. Can you name some artificial sources of light? Some artificial sources of light are street lamps, maybe a lamp in your bedroom, a flashlight, all kinds of lights that are human made. In the next class, we thought about how does light travel? Do you remember how light travels? Wow, scientists, so smart. Light travels in a straight line. And then last class, we figured out how to make something dark. Shout out to you team for finding all those cool ways to make that dark room for my friend Tegan. Tegan was able to sleep so much better the other night thanks to your advice. So nice job friends. I saw so many friends who created boxes that had lids so no light could get through and all the light was blocked. I saw friends using blankets to cover up all the room so that there was no light. So smart. Today, we're going to be answering this question. What are shadows? Show me silent excitement if you've heard that word shadow before. I see fr some friends are showing me silent excitement. So excited to be able to talk about that more today and hopefully everyone will learn something new. So if we remember, we saw this picture when we learned about how light travels in a straight line. In last class, we figured out how to block light. What can you do to block light? Yeah, you could put an object in front of it. For example, if I put a ball, a ball in front of this light, then it will block all the light from reaching the other side. But when we block an light, with an object, we create something. We create this little gray thing right here. Who knows, what is this little gray thing right there? What do you think that is? I hear a lot of smart guesses. That is a shadow. Show me silent excitement if you figured out that was a shadow. Nice work. When an object blocks a source of light, like this flashlight, it creates a shadow. Today, I want to get the chance to explore shadows and create shadows around us. One way we could do that is by creating shadow puppets. We can put our hands in front of a source of light and create objects. So you see here, when this person looks like they have their thumb up, two fingers down and two fingers out, they were able to create an animal. What animal is that? <laughs> that looks like a dog. And I see here, they bent their fingers like this. They created what almost looks like another dog, maybe a bulldog, maybe a Boston Terrier for BU. And I see that you can create rabbits, you can create lots of different animals and creatures using your hands and creating shadows. You can also manipulate or change shadows around you to make them bigger or smaller. When you get closer to the light, 
you can create a big shout. I'm gonna show you a big shout out this person. Wow, this person was able to make a shadow that looks bigger than another human being just by being really close to the light. When you get really close to the surface and far away from the light, you can create a really small shadow. But I don't wanna just tell you all this stuff, I want you guys to explore and find this out for yourselves. So after watching this video, head on to Seesaw. And on Seesaw, what I want you to do is I want you to find a light source in your house. That can be a flashlight, that can be a lamp, that can just be the sun from the window. And I want you to try and create different shadows in front of it. So maybe put your fingers or put an object in front of that light and see what shows up behind it. Then I want you to draw a picture of what your shadows look like. After that, record yourself talking about what you noticed. So I'll show you what I did. I first used this marker right here and picked out a bunch of different colors over here to draw a picture of what happened when I tried to create a shadow. So I used a flashlight as a source of light and when I put my fingers to look like this in front of the flashlight, I noticed that I created a shadow that looks like a duck. Now, if it's a little tricky for you to draw on Seesaw, that's okay, because you can draw in your science journal. Remember, your science journal is inside the black folder in your yellow bag. And inside that science folder, you can use your crayons and pencils to draw a picture of what your shadow looks like. And then on Seesaw, you can just use the camera to take a picture of what you drew. So you can either draw a picture in your science journal or draw a picture right on Seesaw. After you finish drawing that picture like I did, make sure you press this microphone right here to record yourself talking about what you noticed. In my picture, after drawing my picture, I might press the mark microphone and say that I noticed that when the light source was above my hand, the shadow showed up below my hand. Or I might say, I noticed that when I put my fingers like this, I was able to create a shadow that looked like a duck. Or I might say, I noticed when I moved my hand closer to the light, my shadow looked smaller than when I moved it further, or looked bigger than when I moved it further away. Those are kinds of things that you can talk about when you record yourself talking about what you noticed. I can't wait to see how you guys explored shadows and what you were able to learn. I'll see you on Thursday, friends. Bye.